Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. So, Charles, a viewer of the show, reached out to me through a private help session. He wanted to know how much this guitar was worth. And after I helped him with that, he offered, hey, do you want to document this guitar? I'll just have the seller ship it to you, and then you can get it back to me. Now, I do get offered that quite often, and generally the answer is no, because oftentimes I'm buried in my own review pieces, and I'm starting to get that way again, but this is a model that I've been wanting to document. Because A, I don't fully understand them myself, and I want to, and B, they're just so hard to find this particular version in decent shape shape or for a good price. So let's go ahead and get this thing out. Oh man, it's like deja vu. Trade Tuesday season one. We had a case as like the first or second offering in it and we didn't know exactly what it was. The initial owner bought it thinking it was an SG, but no. Inside these kind of slightly smaller cases, we are finally going to talk about the Nighthawk. But this j isn't just any Nighthawk. This is the Custom, the CS3, I believe they call it. CST3 sometimes even. It's the fanciest version of the Nighthawk being the Nighthawk Custom. Okay, so this is not going to be my usual complete guide because as I said, I don't fully understand these things myself. I need to have every single model before I can tell you, oh yeah, this version has this, this, that, that. But what I can tell you is you definitely want this one because it's so fancy. So we have this beautiful flame maple top on this one. We have three humbuckers that we're going to need to talk about. We've got these fancy J200 style crown inlays done up in mother of pearl. And of course we have that fancy looking Gibson headstock. Now first impressions, this is actually chunkier than I thought it was going to be. That's a beefy body. And obviously we're going to have so many different tonal opportunities on these things. Because not only do you have three pickups, but you also got the push pull to get you different tonalities within that. You've got a five way blade switch. So technically we should have like around 10 tones or something like that. But before we tear this thing apart, let's do a little bit of a recap of the models that I know of anyway. So the Nighthawk was the first of the Hawk series. They first launched in 1993 and were discontinued in 1999. Now there's also a series who ran afterwards starting in mid 1996 called the Blues Hawk. Those are technically different, but both of these were designed by the guy named JT Ribeloff. You might've heard his name before. He's been attributed to designing many of Gibson guitars. So to go over a few of these things, there's the Nighthawk standard that looks like this. You generally have some sort of like a burst finish or something pretty nice. Two pickups, you get the split parallelogram inlays. This is like, the standard Nighthawk a lot of people think of. But then you could also get the one that was like a step below the special. It just had dot inlays on it, generally a more common finish. And then we have the ones that we're talking about today, the Nighthawk Custom. Now what's important to note, you can find two pickup and three pickup variations, I believe on all these models. And there's even Floyd Rose variations out there if you really want it. But then there's also a baby version of this guitar just called the Hawk. It just has a wrap tail piece, two humbuckers. So it doesn't really capture anything that the Nighthawk series is is known for necessarily. It just gives you that body shape in a much less expensive variation. Then the Blues Hawk has a few different models. I really want to document one of the blue ones one day. What makes those things interesting are the P90 pickups and they have a dummy coil in the back so they don't hum, but still sound pretty good in theory. There's also one called the Little Lucille, which is BB King's Lucille, just shrunken down into a Blues Hawk style, I guess, with the Veritone TP6 tailpiece, all fun things like that. Another cool one is the Landmark series. You've got unique finishes for the US national parks. I would really like to document a complete set of those. And then you have a few other limited edition custom colors, you know, early 90s dealer custom order stuff. One that's known is called Chocolate Burst. It's just kind of like a translucent brown. It's not that special, but it's part of the ST3 series and they made 100 of those. And then they also reissued them, you know, somewhere around 2009. There was a pretty basic one. I have documented one of those. There was another standard in 2010. You've got the Nighthawk in 2011. There's a Nighthawk Studio around the same time. They also have Epiphone variations, including a Nancy Wilson signature one. And there were also 20th anniversary Nighthawk standards introduced in 2013. So if nothing else, I hope this video broadens your horizons to just how many of these things there are. I mean, that's probably not even all of them, but for me to tell you all the specifics between them, it would just be too long. Let's focus on this one, the Big Mac Daddy, the custom, as we throw it onto the workbench to take an individual look at its parts and specs.
Inside the Nighthawk Custom, let's learn about its secrets. So let's start with our neck back up here. This is a mini humbucker, you know, kind of similar to what you'd find in a Firebird in the fact that it has no exposed pole pieces. But instead of being called a Firebird pickup or anything, they call it the M series mini humbucker. So this should sound different from other mini humbuckers. And of course, we've got the gold plating here, even a golden metal ring. As far as IDing this outside of a guitar, when we document more of these Nighthawks, let's see if they all have this, because that might be something we can use because everything's going to have that patent number on it. But then what's this? A single coil in a Gibson? Yes, indeed. That's pretty cool to see. The official title of these is the NSX single coil. These single coils look a lot different from the Fender style ones. They've got the magnets on the back. You've got the windings in here, but they actually have inserts within the body that the screws secure into. So you don't ever have to worry about those stripping out, but you can see your mahogany body throughout all these cavities. And this bad boy is called the M-Series Slanted Humbucker for obvious reasons. Normally, humbuckers, they're all lined up, but these ones are just wound a little bit differently. You'll also notice that this humbucker is a little bit different than normal in the fact that it has two slug coils. So normally, you have an adjustable row of pull pieces somewhere on a humbucker, like you see over here. That's what those slotted screws are. But this one, they're both the slug coils, as they call it. You don't adjust them. And they have a similar ring similar to the neck pickup. However, it almost kind of looks like a, a Telecaster bridge pickup here with the way that they have the brass backplate. So perhaps these are made just a little bit differently. If you don't know what finish you have, you can look in your neck pickup cavity and you can see what it is right here. So TA stands for trans amber which, as implied, is a see-through amber color, but there's also an antique natural, which will look kind of similar to this, but a little bit lighter, and then obviously your fire burst. I don't see any markings in our middle pickup, and our bridge, I've never seen this before. It's stamped, checked, looks like January 5th, 1991, something like that. I doubt that says 91, it just looks like that. It might be a four, that's all squished. And then you have your model designator there, DSC-3. But before we put things back together here, I suppose we should see how thick is this top? Is it a veneer? No, it's actually a pretty decent thickness. I would say maybe about a quarter of an inch or so. Okay, so now that we understand the pickups, let's go and talk about this. So master volume, master tone, very straightforward. You have a five-way selector switch. Neck, neck and middle, middle, middle bridge, bridge, just kind of like a Stratocaster. However, this guy splits our coils and gets rid of the top one of each of these. So just because it's a mini humbucker, it's still a humbucker. It's got two rows inside of it. So your neck would be just this coil, then just this coil and this coil, still just that one, so not changing anything. And then it would be these coils and then just that one. So 10 different tones out of here. And that's what's interesting about Nighthawks. Even the two pickup variation has that exact same thing. Here's a nice graphic that shows you what you can do. But something else that's cool about this blade switch is sometimes like on Stratocasters, you just have a screw. These ones actually use an Allen wrench just so they're a little bit more flat and flush against the body and they don't look as out of place. But while we're over here, we've got the output jack on the side. Let's get our readings. So we've got a neck pickup of about four. Our middle single coils around 15. Then our bridge is too hot to read. Like, I have to put it on the 2000k ohm setting to get anything. And then for fun, our in-between's about 7.5. Then our other one, about 15-ish. Then, of course, we can also split it, which gives us 7.74 in the neck. Middle, 3.91. Actual middle position, 7.55. 3.94, middle bridge. And then that doesn't seem to change in the actual bridge position so i'm not sure what's going on there but that's okay i'm sure it'll make more sense once we plug this thing in but let's take a look at this bridge it is a string through gibson style so the bridge just secures to the body itself with these four screws if you're wondering what that is that is your grounding tap you find that all the time on gibson guitars especially hidden underneath vibrolas routes like that are pretty common but here's the bridge itself it's got a bit of weight to it it's not like overly heavy but it's kind of like a telecaster style one i guess you could say it's just sawn off you've got your six individual saddles here so you adjust these fender like but since the rest of this guitar is not very gibson it doesn't look all that out of place so take a look at their body shape it's basically just a slightly shrunken down les paul let's go ahead and grab some measurements because les pauls are 11 and 13 so this guy's 9 and roughly 13 
So skinnier here, but then still fattens up. You know, they played with the dimensions a bit. They gave it a sharp Florentine cut. And you'll also notice they have acoustic style three ply binding. You don't find that on electric guitars very often. Sometimes you'll find it on fancier like semi hollows, but as far as solid body electrics, not too often. It's important to note that the Blues Hawk that came after actually utilizes alder bodies. And those things are chambered out in the sides. That's why they have that whole semi-hollow vibe to them. So that's a big difference between them, despite the names being kind of similar. So moving on from our solid mahogany body and maple top, this neck is quite fascinating. So it's a mahogany neck. It's got the ebony fretboard. And as we were talking earlier, it's got the J200 style crown inlays. But do you guys remember this Les Paul Studio review? It had very similar inlays. I'm wondering if House of Guitars was semi what influenced by these things coming out that made them want to put these same inlays on a Les Paul Studio with the same ebony fretboard. But you've got 22 medium jumbo style frets on this thing. And then another big attribute of these models, both Nighthawk and Blues Hawk, is the fact that their fender scale length 25 and a half inches. So if you're a fender guy, you really like that scale length, but you want something a little bit more Gibson-y, you can check one of these things out. It's like a Les Paul Light, <laughs> something a little bit different. So the nut width is incredibly skinny, 1.61 inches. That is the tiniest neck width I think I've ever ran into. Like that even puts 70s SGs for a run for their money. And then 2.03 by the 12th. So that's fairly standard. So if you like those really skinny necks up here, you might like one of these. Now, as far as the depth at the first fret, it's 0.85 inches. And then a really chunky one inch by the 12th. So get this, it's skinny feeling here, but it's ultra rounded, not quite U-shaped, still within C territory, but it just gets such a hump on the back of the neck. It feels nice and big, but still super rounded. So I would almost say like a C to like U-shaped feeling neck, but yet you still kind of lose the shoulders. It's an interesting neck profile. Here's a good look at the first fret and the 12th fret. You see what I'm talking about? That really quick sloping shoulder right there that's almost non-existent and then a nice roundedness on the back. But now let's move on to this beautiful headstock. Finding single ply binding around a headstock is not something you see too often. Now you do find it in like the classic antique series and generally I don't like it, but this model, it's something all in its own. So it works really well, especially with the crown inlay here, matching our crown inlays on our fretboard. But our truss rod cover is just basic. Our truss rod's in good shape, and notice our tuners. These are vintage style Clusons. They don't have any washers around them. They utilize the bushing within the headstock, so it's a little bit less of a profile on the headstock. That gives it that vintage appeal. Moving on to the backside, let's take a look at the rat's nest. So we've got a whole bunch of wires going everywhere from the regular pot to the push pull to the five way blade switch. It looks complicated, but I'm sure if you know what you're doing, it's not that bad. But what's really cool is the fact that you can see through to the maple top from the back, because obviously they routed out all the wood. These are some nice clean quality routes here as well. Now, as far as the shape of this, it's kind of similar to an SG, but just a little bit bigger. But we do have our string through ferrules right here that you can see through the back. And these do incorporate a comfort carve into their design. It's not very subtle. It just goes away very quickly. So if that lines up to where it needs to on your body, you're going to enjoy that. Now, as far as the cutaway, these are flat tops. So kind of like a Les Paul special, but yet we still have the maple top. But there's no maple cap exposed, like, you know, 50s Les Paul style or anything like that. And again, sharp Florentine cutaway. There's not too much more to say here besides our strap buttons which are in the normal locations. And then look at the heel of the neck. That kind of helps show you what this neck is like because normally it's a little bit more rounded, whereas this kind of has that whole shoulderless feel and then nice and rounded right here. So that's very similar to what the neck feels like. And I think you can even just see how rounded that neck is from right here. And this example does have some finish checking, but you gotta get it in the light just right. I mean, it's just standard basic stuff, nothing trauma related. And here we can see our Gibson Deluxe Tuners. They're double line, single ring. So if you ever hear those terminologies thrown around with Clusen tuners, they're talking about the flat lines right here, not the small lines. So you can find single line or double line or even no line variations. It's just talking about the wording here. And then the rings are right here. Sometimes you find a double ring, mainly in the 70s. And then like older style ones are single ring. But then you might be saying, hey, I thought you said this was a 1994. 
Why does our serial number tell us it's 1990? That's before Nighthawks even existed. Well, my dear friend, what is the 400th day of the year? Throws people off all the time. 1994 is the first year that they ever used that year, year, production number sequence. And they rebirthed this in 2014 and it lasted until 2019 when they switched it back. So this one, we know it's from 1994 and it's production number 655 for this particular year. Got our Made in USA stamp and not too much else. And of course we can't forget the black light test on an older guitar. Everything's glowing the way I would want to see on one of these. Our knobs have a good look to them. Finish is nice and even. Now let's flip over to the back side. Remember, that's what you're looking for on a black light test. You want an even glow. So like down here we can actually see, despite not being able to see that in regular lighting situations, someone has a strap that's rubbed through the clear coat a little bit or has discolored it or maybe there was a touch up at some point in time. Not too big of a deal though. Then you're probably like, hey, why is this a different color than that? This is just darker mahogany. You can see that even in regular lighting situations. But it doesn't look like we have any uh, stand rash on this side. And I'm not seeing any breaks, cracks, or repairs. Just some light wear to the clear coat right there. And our headstock is also good. All said and done, this example weighs 7 pounds, 14 ounces. So just a little shy of 8 pounds. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and unlock some of these tones. All right, let's go ahead and run through the tones of this. So down position is actually the coil split on this one. I'm not sure if that's backwards from normal. Kind of seems backwards to me, but up makes it the humbucker mode. So we'll start with the normal position, neck pickup. Nice and punchy, but yet very bright. Try that bridge position now. has like an active sound to it. That's crazy. Now we'll try neck and middle together. Bridge and middle. First impressions, it's an ultra bright guitar. Maybe they were trying to make a Stratocaster here. Now let's try it with the coil split mode. I think you'll be very surprised with this. That's really clear for a neck pickup. Now we'll try our bridge. Bridge just gets way too thin for my own personal tastes. Now middle position. Still seems to have a little bit of a difference in the tone. I say that's probably my favorite tone out of this whole thing so far. Nice and meaty. Now neck and middle. All right. Now these 
these two? I understand why this one's set up like this because the down position definitely has the most unique tones. But if you need something more Gibson esque, I guess you just put it up then. I don't really know what I was expecting, but I wasn't quite expecting these tones. That's a very bright sounding instrument. Now, I'm trying to demo everything, which makes it kind of difficult to get into the zone and really appreciate it for what it is. So I hope that kind of gives you an idea of what you can do. Let's go ahead and see what kind of distorted tones we can get. Now that we know all about the Nighthawk Custom, what are my final thoughts on this thing? I've waited so long to document one of these, I had no idea really what to expect outside of demoing the modern day Tupica version. I gotta say, kind of let down. Like, I, I don't know what I was thinking it was going to sound like, but not quite this. I couldn't really get into the zone. Maybe it's just because I was paralyzed trying to demo 10 things. <laughs> but it's a definitely an interesting piece of Gibson history. I can see how they lasted as long as they did, but not too much longer, because they're really quirky for a Gibson. I mean, three pickups, string through, Tele style, fancy inlays, 25 and a half inch scale length, a little bit thinner body than normal as compared to a Les Paul, kind of like a Les Paul special from the Gibson USA lineup before specials were specials again. <laughs> but I think the most lasting impression that this thing has made on me is really the neck profile of these. I don't know if it's my favorite, but it's very impressionable because you remember this. That has a very nice hump on the back of the neck. It fills your hand. So troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed checking out this Nighthawk with me today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.